Hello, everyone, and welcome to another support webinar. Uh, today is a uh, topic is Microsoft Teams introduction. My name is Tom, and I'll be doing today's webinar. It should take about 15, 20 minutes, I suspect, unless there's a lot of Q&A. So today we're going to go over the capabilities of Microsoft Teams, mostly because we've taken a large step of creating an integration path from iTrack 365 to Microsoft Teams meaning that customers that are already utilizing Teams can also use iTrack from within Teams. So this is a big step and this is a tool that we use internally, so we believe in its capabilities. And so it's natural for us to extend iTrack to this platform. So we're gonna cover the basics of Microsoft Teams, uh, cover the navigation, so the communication aspects of it, like video messaging and chat. We'll talk about the files management, uh, teams, some of the collaborative uh, group and uh, document management functions and anything else along the way. If people have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A window and I will answer them either during or after the session. Otherwise, uh, you can follow up with us at any time afterwards at support at itrack365.com. You're also going to be able to find tons of information online. Regarding this, I don't think there's going to be too many features and functions that people aren't familiar with, but hopefully we do touch upon a few features that will be useful to you in your Microsoft Teams experience. So just a little background, Teams has been around as a product from about 2017, and it's gone through multiple iterations, including some uh, good changes recently. It's predominantly known for uh, chat and video calling, but um, I think the document management capabilities because of its integration with SharePoint is quite strong. So I'll make sure to uh, make note of that uh, throughout the orientation. And um, for those um, people that are interested in using this, chances are your organization probably already has the necessary license uh, to use this. So if your uh, company uses the Office 365 suite, um, very often uh, that's already part of it. And just recently, Microsoft announced that uh, Teams will be available for free for friends and family as well. So that's an interesting development to keep an eye out for because that opens up a lot of possibilities. So what I'm going to do is going to share my screen. Okay. So what I'm currently showing is actually the Teams window called uh, Live Events. So this is a subsection of what Teams can do for uh, customers looking to do uh, video sharing, conferences, things of that nature. But we're going to go through and we're going to talk about the regular things uh, as part of the navigation components. So on the left hand side here, we have activity, chat, uh, the team side, the calendar, calls, files, and a few other um, app add ons. So the activity screen just gives you notifications. So if people had uh, mentioned your name somewhere in the chat or posted a document specifically meant for you, this is where it will show up. It's an all purpose uh, place for those notifications. The chat window is uh, commonly used to uh, begin conversation with either uh, one person or multiple people. So for example, here is a chat that I started uh, with myself as an external guest and here I can just use the window uh, to type away at a message. And this is also where I can start the uh, video um, voice or screen sharing. So there's different icons for those. So that's the video uh, conferencing icon. This is the audio call and this is the screen sharing. You can also add people into the conversation by clicking the add people icon and uh, not too long ago, there was also a pop-up chat option that was introduced. So if you need to do multiple things at Teams at the same time, so to keep a conversation going, uh, you can uh, open up the pop-up chat and then do other things on the left-hand panel. If you need to start a new message, uh, you just enter in the people that you wanna chat with. And if you need to include two, three, four, five people, you can just go ahead and just keep it adding additional people. And now it's a group chat. So it's as simple as that. You don't really need to do anything different. If you have a list of contacts that you want to add to your favorites, so people in large organizations, this is an easier way to far, find those people and start conversations with them. So you can simply uh, add a contact to this group and that list will be maintained for you. And there's also that option at the bottom to create the new contact group. Um, 
if you have a lot of people, there's a filter icon and you can uh, filter for those additional people. And if the conversation has people that you want to drop from it, you simply remove those people from the conversation. Okay. So obviously all your past chats are searchable. So whether you're searching for a file, a document, a team, uh, or whatever, uh, you can use the uh, the chat bar, oh, sorry, the search bar at the top. And there's also a lot of handy commands uh, that are included as part of this that I'm not gonna go over because it's a fairly lengthy list. But if you're really into maximizing your team's navigation, you can, um, you can search and do a lot of things such as document creation and group creation from the search bar. It's, uh, it's quite extensive. And if you just do the at for command list, it will then uh, give you um, basically a shorthand explanation of what you can do. So you can uh, look for news, uh, grab weather, you can do search for wiki articles directly from teams. So uh, again, quite a bit. And the more you want to get into it, the more options there are there. Okay, uh, let's see if, if I can show an example of a search. So I'm looking for a BRD, which is business requirements document. And you can see that everywhere that that term has been used shows up. And if I'm looking for a person, obviously I would find that on the person tab. And if you want to look for a BRD document, you can also click on files and look for that term. So again, very quick, very powerful. The next um, feature that's a common element of Teams is uh, the groups and channels within those groups. So here's an example of a team, a customer support team. This is our chat. And in here, I have people that have added to the group. Uh, we post files, we have conversations, uh, and then we can add various add-ons, which I'll touch on in a little bit here. But let me go through and uh, show you what's involved in creating a team. So at the bottom here, there's a join or create team option. And if you click on that, you're gonna get an, uh, an option to uh, create a team from scratch, join a team potentially, and then you can do some other stuff like you can have um, invite only teams so you have to know a code for it again that's just a different uh, element to uh, control who can and cannot see a particular team so you can have a fully public team you can have a team based on invites or you can have a fully private team so only the owners of the team control the the various access of the members so i'm going to say create a team i'm going to select uh, build from scratch uh, just before I do that, I guess you can also import teams from um, Office 365. So if you've got your security in Office 365 set up to differentiate by location or department, that could be a quick way to start a team. But I'm just going to say I'm going to build this team from scratch. I'm going to say this is a public. So uh, once I create the team, other people can find this team and join or request to join. And then I'm just going to add a, a couple of uh, people from the organization. Okay, so I'm gonna call this example team. Click create. And then once it's created the team shell, you can then add members. So I'm gonna get add a couple members of my organization here. So I'm gonna bring Kasim, who's uh, from our support group and Aaron, who's from our marketing group. And once I've got them entered in here, well, I can actually also add an external person. So one thing to note here is if you're adding somebody that's external to organization, doing the search is not gonna find their full name unless they've been added to another team previously. So in order to add them properly, you'd have to type in their um, full email address. But in my case, because I've added myself to some other testing teams, I can use an external email of mine. And I'm gonna hit the add button. And what it's gonna do is gonna go through and uh, add the teams here. So once you see them in the list below, that means they are now part of the team. And because I'm the administrator of the team, I can also change the ownership of the group. So if other people within my organization, if I wanna make them owner, so they would have the same uh, rights as me, that I could do that, or I can leave them as members. Uh, anybody that's a guest, uh, like an external user, cannot be made uh, an owner. Okay, so that's, that's my group. And in here, again, I can start typing uh, questions or conversation with the team members. I can add channels. So this is a uh, sub stream within the team. So this is, uh, this is an example one that we're gonna make. And let's say we want in this team to have uh, personal uh, 
and then we'll do a stream that's for work. So what do I do in that case? I go down, I find the team again. I click the ellipses next to it and say add channel. And we're going to add a work channel. And you do have controls over those channels as well. You can make one public or you can make one private. There's a little bit of flexibility. But now you can see that on the team, it's got the general channel it creates automatically and the personal work that it created on the fly. So in here, again, you can start doing some of the stuff that's normal with uh, Teams management. So this is the start of um, documentation uh, control. So typically you can either go and create a new document using the Office 365 suite. So that's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and things of that nature. And what it's going to do, it's actually going to launch the Word document within uh, Teams itself. So this is like a stripped down version of the full uh, Word tool. And if you like it, you can work and create the document like you would normally. Uh, you can also say open a desktop app. So what this will do is that separately will create a new document or sorry, open up the document that you started working on uh, externally. Okay. And then at that point, you can start working exclusively on that document uh, outside of Teams, but it will still update because it's a dynamic update environment. So if you have multiple people looking at the same document, uh, they would all be able to see the same thing. Okay, so at this point I can say, uh, I don't wanna edit within uh, Teams anymore, and I can close off this document and it'll go back uh, to the Teams. It can also upload documents, so I can upload PowerPoints, Excel, anything else. And once those documents are in the system, you can then share the links. So I'll show an example what that looks like. So I can right click on the document. You have a few options. You can option it in the web browser. You can open it in the desktop app. Right there. Or the other options would be copy link. So this is a good example is if you want to share this with somebody, you can paste it into the chat channel or into the uh, email. And right here is the first indication that these document management is integrated with SharePoint. So if you want to point to this document within Teams, that's fine, leave it on this tab. But if you want to point to the source document that exists in SharePoint, um, this document is do duplicated across both tenants at the same time. So I can grab that. And also, if you use SharePoint separately, if you copy this link, you would then be taken to that document within SharePoint, and you can find it within SharePoint just by using the regular search features uh, within SharePoint. Okay. You can do a few other things too. If you want to pin a document to the top, you can say make this a tab, and we'll add it there. And that way it's just easier to get to. You don't have to chase it in the files folder. You can create folders and subfolders, so that's all pretty normal uh, stuff. You can download the document to the desktop. You can delete it. Uh, you can obviously rename it, move it to another Teams, make a copy of it, and a few other features as well. There's document management that's common to Office 365 documents. So if you're familiar with checking out a document so that limits its editing capabilities, you've got that built in as well. Okay. You also notice that Within the document itself, you can annotate. Again, that's a, a feature that already exists in Word and Excel and things of that nature. So there won't be anything unusual there. But you know, what I wanted to point out is that if I right click on the document, it opens up this link here, but it also opens up this link uh, control bar here. So those things are um, pre-selected and it's the same whether you right click or use those, it doesn't really matter. Okay, inside of Teams, there's additional things that you can add at the top here as um, additional features and functions. So one of the things that it adds automatically is the ability to create a wiki. But if you click the plus uh, icon, it's going to bring up a total list of pre-configured available connectors to Microsoft or other third-party tools. So for example, Forms is a popular one. If you use Microsoft Forms for uh, quizzes or surveys, that one's there. 
OneNote, uh, if you want to track large amounts of notes in a singular location, that's also there. Planner is fairly popular. That's good for to-do lists. You can uh, integrate Power BI dashboards and in a whole bunch of other things. So that's just the Microsoft ones. And then if you scroll through or search, you'll find a lot of third-party plugins. So um, if you're looking for other collabo tools or video tools or education tools, um, there's quite a lot. And there'll be one more time that I come back to this. So I think for this point, it's OK. So that's uh, channel management. Let me touch on a couple other things. If you ever need to go back and make changes to the team or the channel, you can right click on the gear icon and then you will see who are the owners of the channel, who are the guests. So if you need to remove guest access or member access, you can right click or sorry, just click on the X and that person will disappear. You can do other things um, like uh, if you got people in different locations or you want to identify them as with particular roles that essentially comes through from Office 365. But you can also control that in team. You can add members um, after the fact. You can add channels after the fact. You can change the visibility of the channels. So whether people see it automatically or they don't. You can link directly to channels. So if you want to share a link to a channel where a particular conversation is going on, you can do that. You can have notification control over the channel. So do you get uh, notifications, basically beeps and alerts to those channels? You can pin them. So essentially create a list of channels that are your favorites if you have a lot of them. Um, there's some additional steps you can do where you grab an email to the channel. So if you're using it in an email format, those messages will be sent to the channel so people have visibility of them. So that's a big aspect of collaborators and a lot more other tools that are in there. Okay. There's quite a bit in the uh, settings side as well. You can control the picture, the icon. You can control what people are able and not able to do, such as are they able to add channels or delete channels? Uh, what are guests able to do? Are, are mentions using the at symbol allowed? Um, if you need to invite people to a code protected channel, this is where you generate that. You know, are people allowed to use gifts and sort of things of that nature? You know, you can have tags specific to the channel. There's quite a bit. There's also built in analytics, so you can see how busy the team is, who's using it, how much uh, information is passing through it in terms of files who are the active users and uh, you can also uh, attach or disallow certain apps from being used within the channel so again pretty powerful and you can get more information on this if you're really interested okay so i think that's it for teams um within the teams channels again if people aren't familiar if you want to add somebody you simply select the add symbol and then it'll preload the people that are part of that team. Um, you can also use at to activate certain bots allowable by Microsoft, but that would be a separate piece of work that you have to do. And then once messages are posted in here, everything else, you can reply to the whole group. You can reply to individual person and that's part of the normal collaboration tool set. So Next, we're going to look at the calendar. So this integrates directly from your office calendar. So any meetings that I have on my calendar also show up here. So this is the webinar calendar invite. In here, I'd be able to go and uh, join meetings. So I'm already joining this one, but I've got another meeting coming up in a little, little bit here. So if you click on that, you'll see who are the invitees, what's the meeting all about, and then you can click the join button. So it duplicates the setup that you have in office and also from here you can create new meetings just so you like you could from your outlook calendar and right at the beginning i mentioned live events so this is a, a feature in microsoft teams for certain organizations where you can create your own live events this is what we use for webinars so this is would be the location where uh, you can set up a live event which is slightly different than a normal teams meeting okay you can also click the meet me now button which would start a meeting right away and then you can invite people from within uh, the the meeting itself 
Uh, as far as uh, the capabilities, once you do have a meeting going, so whether it's a live event or a regular Teams meeting, I think most people are familiar. You can do obviously uh, video sharing. You can do chat from within the the the, the meeting. Um, you can uh, keep track notes. You can post uh, surveys within the Teams. You can obviously share your screen, share documentation. If you need more information about that, Microsoft has plenty of information on their website. Okay, the next feature that we're going to talk about is calls. So this works uh, like a normal uh, indicator of people that have called you, who you've called, the, the duration of the call, things of that nature. So you can either start those phone calls from within the chat or Teams option, but you can also start them from here. You can do some uh, some other things like adding uh, speed dials for your favorite uh, numbers. You can create a group. So if you're always having group calls, you can create a group from here. You can add external people. Um, you can look at um, uh, sort of the history of the calls that you've had. And uh, similarly to everywhere else in Teams, if you want to start a chat from the screen, even though it's the call screen, you can do that as well. So this lists your contacts, this lists your history of the calls made and the durations. Uh, you can request callbacks. If you had any voicemails left for you, assuming you have this set up, because not everybody does, this is where you can see a history of those voicemails. And uh, yeah, pretty typical, very similar to Skype. Uh, Teams obviously was built in, at least in part on the Skype for Business platform. So some features for customers that are used Skype in the past would be very familiar. And next we're going to go to the files management. So obviously from within the individual teams, you could see the files, but this is also a repository of all the documents that you have uploaded or shared within a Teams chat. So that's important to note that if you shared a document within a Teams chat without uploading it to a particular team, there would be a, a record of that document here. So you can go, we can find that document, you can update it, you can delete it, you can edit it in real time. That's all allowable. So, and as similar to what you saw from the Teams files tab in here, you can edit this document within Teams, you can open it in the web browser, or you can open it in the desktop app, or you can download it, get a link to share and search for it, things of that nature. Yeah. So there's some other links that are handy. Recent documents obviously is big uh, to see what specifically got uploaded to Teams as opposed to SharePoint. And then you can also see what documents you've downloaded. And uh, you can also add additional uh, cloud storage locations. So uh, on top of the automatic syncing with SharePoint, you can add OneDrive and, and other cloud solution providers. Okay. So for example, if I want to go add storage cloud, it's going to give me the options Dropbox, Box, ShareFile, Google Drive. So you can make a connector to that. So if your organization uses uh, Google Drive as opposed to SharePoint, you could set that up so the documents sync to there instead. And then once you've got the connector built to one of these cloud storages, then you can automatically attach those documents instead of from your desktop and your computer. You can attach them um, from your cloud service locations. Okay, so I showed that within uh, Teams, you can add, click on the plus to bring up a tab of the various built-in connectors, but this is another way to get at it. So you hit the ellipse and then you say more apps and then it's going to bring up a search service. So this is uh, an easier way to find other built-in tools, like if you wanted to use GoToMeeting or use Yammer or um, weather services or stock services or news services or education services, they're all listed here. And you can either search for it by name, or if you're not sure what you're looking for, you can uh, use the categories that Microsoft has set up. So let's see what comes up in top picks. Dynamics 365 would be another one that we would use here internally. Uh, Lucid Charts is a, a very well-known productivity one. Um, yeah, and so these are constantly built by third parties and by Microsoft themselves, and they're added regularly. So if you're not sure if it's available, search for it now. And then in the future, there would be things regularly added. And I do also believe that you can develop apps yourselves so if you've got a development group and you're looking for functionality to be included in teams you can develop for the teams platform 
And then either if you put it out publicly, it would be available this way. But then if you built it to be privately used within your organization, you can uh, upload a custom app. So down here, there's a option for it. You click it and then that would obviously be published somewhere locally or on a drive. And then that would appear here and you can share it with the organization. OK, and then uh, I think that's about it. So that uh, icon also appears here. So yeah, under the ellipse was one place and apps down here. And lastly, if you are looking for more information how to use Teams once you've signed up, the, the help feature within Teams is actually pretty good. So if you select training, for example, it will then bring up a wiki uh, giving you a lot of videos and documents about all the stuff that I've shown, you know, chat, file sharing, videos, calling, uh, document management, etc. So there's a lot of videos. There's a lot of documents. You should be able to quite easily get your hands on almost anything that you need. And Teams also automatically updates. Um, it allows you um, to go through the what's new section to see what was recently updating. So you'll see different options for availability in different browsers. Uh, so for example, you can use Teams not just from the desktop app, you can do it through your phone or through your, your web browser with very much the same capabilities. Um, there's also introductions as to different things you can use, such as their AI tools. They have they introduced the background management tools and in, in uh, the video chat, so it changes the background behind you from whatever is actually behind you to a screenshot. Uh, so those are the kind of things that get changed. Um, the numbers of people allowed on a video call change. You know, uh, the, the maximum size of group chats have changed. There's quite a bit of changes that Microsoft does. This is a very active platform for them. Um, there's millions and millions of new users on the platform since the start of the COVID epidemic. So they're very active in improving the tool set. And oftentimes you see changes being made weekly. So coming back and looking at the what's new tab would give you quite a bit of that. All right, and if you're not sure what version that you're on, you can always click the about button and then it would tell you. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything else that you can't find directly through Teams itself, I'm sure you can find on the Microsoft websites. So I think that's it. That covers the majority of one I talk about. Um, just before we wrap up, we'll um, check the QA for any questions. And I'm also going to mention that uh, the webinar uh, two weeks from now, so the one the one weekend the one week after Canada Day, so not, is going to cover the iTrack 365 integration with N Teams. So that will show how you can use the iTrack product within Teams. So that means form management, approvals, process flows, connections to emails, um, you know, access to Dynamics. Uh, administrative functions. So if you're interested in leveraging uh, Teams to better use iTrack, that would be the webinar to attend. Thank you for your time. Um, like I said, I'm going to hang out for about five minutes in case people have any questions or want to uh, see anything else that I demoed.